Hey, so this video is going to show you um, what the GitLab runner code is, where it's located, um, how all the parts fit together. It's uh, as quick a code walkthrough as possible. Um, this time, last time I sort of showed development environment in a vanilla like uh, Debian environment, just to sort of make sure I, I showed you the smooth path. But in this case, I'm actually just going to come back over my my Mac uh, my MacBook Pro, where I already have things set up. So here I am, I've already checked out these repositories. As you can see here, we have uh, Fleeting, GitLab Runner, uh, Fleeting Plugin, Ada for AWS and Google Compute and Task Scaler. And there's another one here, Hello Runner, which I'll get to in the next video, um, showing you how to make a change. Um, so right now what we're do gonna do is just walk through the code. I'll show you how everything fits together and we'll save the actual uh, changing and running and testing for the next video. All right, cool. So. Um, the first thing to, to look at is the, the main. I mean, GitLab Runner is a binary, it starts up. You can run it in a variety of environments, but it's just a binary like any other. So this, this main file here imports a bunch of stuff, okay? It's sort of like has uses um, the CLI framework. It imports, you know, all these different executors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You could trace this all the way through, but I'm just gonna skip to the part where we, we look at those individual executors. Um, just um, uh, some background on what an executor is. So you know what a job is or a build, right? Like job build, same thing. It's a description of what you want you know, GitLab to do. An executor is an environment that can do a job. You smash the two together, you have something that can run. Um, so the smashing happens here in this common executor uh, file. So here you can see this executor, you give it, um, you say prepare, um, prepare to run this job. And if you look at, you know, what's inside the options, you can see it's a build and some other configuration and context and et cetera, metadata like that. So um, yeah, so that's what, uh, that's what you, that's how you get something that actually can execute. Um, if you want to learn more about the, uh, uh, the executor concepts uh, that's going into docs, but right now it's in review, uh, 3291, go check it out. Um, Tomash did a really good job explaining all these in great detail. And a lot of this material is really, in this video, is really just restating what he's already put there. So you can read that as well. Um, all right, so there's another layer of indirection. There's many layers of indirection. That's kind of how we work. Um, there's something called an executor provider. So an executor provider is like a singleton that, that starts up in your runner and it, it, pr it produces these executors one off to mash together with jobs. So it just kind of keeps producing them as a factory, right? We don't call it a factory because it's cool. Right? Um, and in particular, it, 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 it does this so that it can do resource management. Some of these jobs, some of these, uh, sorry, some of the executors actually need to get and release some resources. Uh, so that's what this um, executive provider is for, is resource management. So let's take a look at one of these um, executors. This is the shell executor. This is the most basic one. Um, as you can see, um, uh, you can run the thing. <laughs> um, when you import it, I showed you in the main file how it imports everything. When it gets imported, it registers itself as an executor that can be used. So it's an executor provider. And it uses that string that you put in your TOML or YAML file to say, I want to use the shell executor. So that's how it gets here. It just look, is, is um, the, the higher level binary will look up this executor provider um, by that string and will find the right one. Um, it uses the default provider, the executor. It doesn't actually have its own provider because there's not really any resources to manage. So there's like this, you know, kind of no op provider. Um, and uh, all of the, um, yeah, and this is actually just, this is a, just a link to where, you know, the higher level binary gets that. I already talked about this. Okay, cool. So that's the, that's the shell executor. Um, I want to show you another another main. Now. We're going to take a quick sidebar to the helper because you're going to see the helper here, and it's it's good to know what this thing is all about. So if you take a look here, this is another main file, but notice the imports are a little bit lighter. So 
where are we? We're inside of GitLab Runner Apps, GitLab Runner Helper, okay? So um, let's compare these two main files here. Um, so I'm gonna pull up our other main. Here we go. Okay, so this one, yeah, it has, um, it has, it just imports the helper commands. This one, this main imports the helper commands, but also all of those executors. So the helper, this kind of gives you a little clue. The helper is actually just for, not for actually running jobs, just doing some stuff. And one of those things that it does, it downloads, uh, it pulls down the repository, it downloads artifacts, it pulls down, it unarchives the cache, rearchives the cache, uploads it. Those sort of like generic like things that need to be done in an environment. Um, you can uh, you can um, uh, run it in a in just as a binary, which is what happens with the shell, um, or you can run it in a Docker or in a container, which is, happens with the Docker executor. Um, it just runs in a container, sort of where it has access to the same file system. So it's sort of this helper is responsible for pulling all the stuff down, setting up the file system, and then saving the state of that file system um, for the next job with the distributed cache. Um, doesn't do any job fetching. And as you notice, you know, like uh, the runner itself can all do all this work itself too. Um, it just has the helper for when it needs to delegate that to some other thing. Um, and I'll talk more about that later. All right, so let's talk about another executor. Um, the Docker executor is the most powerful, powerful and mature. Um, it creates a Docker container and it runs the build inside that Docker container. So um, here is uh, here is the um, kind of the meat and potatoes of the Docker executor. It does a bunch of setup. There's a lot more to do with networking and file systems and stuff. So you should read through this file, but it. Sets up a Docker file or a Docker or a container and runs it. Just kind of shells out. So um, it. Uh, um, so let's talk. Let's talk about Docker Machine. So what is Docker Machine? Docker Machine is is sort of, is a project um, which uh, creates VMs on demand, puts Docker in there, and gives you access to it. So it's basically like a way to get a Docker environment in a VM, and that's all. Now, this is the this was sort of the basis of uh, GitLab Runner auto scaling. So um, it's currently we use Docker Machine for auto scaling, and we're moving away from that. And I'll show you more about that in the last part of the code walkthrough. But you should know about this and what it does because it's an interesting stepping stone. Um, so what the machine, so what the the Docker Docker Machine does is it, it has a machine provider. Um, and it actually injects itself into the executor so that it can provide, uh, so it can control resources. So you remember how like the provider gets a chance to sort of like control resources. So the it, it, it it's a provider that wraps another provider um, and the executor wraps like, well, the executor gets the provider injected into it so that when you actually run something with this, it runs it, it, it has an opportunity in the prepare step to go get a VM, right? Make one if it needs to, get a VM for a pool if it, if it has a pool, connect to it, and then inject the job into that. So there's um, another layer of indirection added there. The runner manager can, the runner can actually operate as a runner manager and have this pool of VMs that it keeps with Docker machine. It creates those VMs, you know, runs the actual job in that environment. Um, so this is this is super great. It lets you, um, it does provide auto scaling, so you don't have to have all the running capacity at any given time. You could just kind of maintain some, you know, fluctuating pool. Um, yeah, so that's auto scaling uh, in Docker Machine. Uh, the actual provider does the execution. You can see here, you know, it unwraps it. Right, the provider provides the pro the provider inside the provider does the actual execution. Okay, so. This is all well and good, but it, the Docker machine auto scaling is kind of coupled with Docker. Like it's really all mashed together here. So we're pulling it apart. We're pulling out the auto scaling into a separate thing called task scaler. 
So this is the first place where you have your outside the GitLab runner project. All right, so task scaler, um, we, it, it's all the auto scaling code sort of where uh, in a separate project. So what you do is you inject a per actual provider and, and, and you, and you also inject, um, you inject a provider of environments and you pro inject a provider of, of VMs. Um, and the task scaler doesn't really know specifics about them. It's just responsible for making, managing those resources through an interface. So we wire this in through a new folder in GitLab Runner called um, internal, it's, it's inside executors, internal autoscaler. And basically what it uses is uh, this um, instance group um, abstraction, which is the plugins that I was, I was showing you earlier, and it creates a task scaler. So um, it has a task scaler, and I'm gonna show you what a task scaler is. It's, it's uh, this thing here. So let me show you real quick uh, um, where we are. Let's see, does it show me? Worker, runners, let's come up here. Yeah, so we're inside of task scaler um, now. And we're looking at this file, taskscaler.go, okay? Uh, and this is the main control loop. This is actually a really small package. You could just read the whole thing pretty quickly. Because again, it doesn't have, it doesn't couple with any of the specifics. It's just the auto scaling logic. Here you can see this is the main loop. Sleeps gets a desired number, scales. Sleeps, desired number, scales. That's it, auto scaling right there. Um, yeah, and uh, it actuates through um, the, uh, something called fleeting. So fleeting is the thing that provided that instance group abstraction. So you see here, like when it, inside of scale, I showed you in that inner loop, it actually says to the provisioner, and the provisioner is is the fleeting concept. I would like n VMs. That's pretty much it, and you handle it from there. And this is where Task Scaler says, now it's somebody else's problem. Just give me these VMs. So let me actually jump over um, to show you that instance group um, uh, interface. So this is the interface for the plugins, and this is the interface for Task that Task Scaler uses for them. It says, give me this many VMs. Um, and Fleeting says, okay, great. Um, I, have, uh, I have a plugin that's capable of increasing, decreasing, and giving me connect info or updating. So th this, is, this is the core part. This is the part where you, um, the boundary where you start using AWS, uh, Google, local, whatever, or I don't know, some other cloud provider, it doesn't matter. Um, through the plugin. So um, yeah, so at this point, uh, I'm showing you the next generation of auto scaling. It's this executor that actually has a task scaler. In the task scaler, you give it an instance group, one of these. The task scaler actually um, uh, maintains the auto scaling. The fleeting library maintains uh, you know, like calling this up and down in order to uh, uh, achieve like the desired number of VMs the task scaler wants. Um, and then uh, from here, yeah, it's actually, the, so what's on the other side of this? Um, that's really good to know. This is actually the interface that we use for uh, a HashiCorp Go plugin. So you should Google it, you should read about it. It's a cool piece of tech. Basically it, start, it's, it starts another process in, on the same machine, connects them over standard in and standard out, um, uses a gRPC protocol to um, send these messages back and forth, and then you can just uh, and then you can just call it like it's a local Go program, and it even sets up another set of um, uh, pipes so that it's standard in and standard out itself can get uh, piped back so you can see error logs and stuff. So it really kind of behaves like it's like a local part of the binary, but it's not. It's something built separately. And because it's built separately, um, it can have its own dependency graph, which is really important if you're integrating with every cloud provider. Um, it can be built separately and and maintain, like you can update it at your own cadence, right? The only thing you have to do is make sure you follow that gRPC interface. 
Uh, so if you want to add something, think about backwards compatibility, et cetera. Um, so yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, here's where you, you inject an instance group. Um, I'm going to show you this in action in the next video um, where I show you how to make a change locally and test it. Um, and you'll you'll see how you configure the plugins because that's 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 a pretty important piece. Like how do you choose which plugin to use? How do you tell it, you know, how to manage the VMs, et cetera. So for now, that's uh that's a quick uh quick, fast and furious code walkthrough. Those are the highlights. There's lots of bits and bobs in there. Um, but it's all Golang code, so it should be pretty easy to read, hopefully. Uh thanks for watching.